Well, hello again. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to the Center Court. Today we have a great session, and it's one of my favorite things to do, which is just to sit down and talk to current MBA students. And to that end, we have two terrific people, young professionals, who are earning their MBA from Duke University's Fuqua School of Business. Uh, one is in New York, one is in Austin. Let me introduce uh, them to you. Jen Siebel, who is uh, just completed her first year and is now with uh, on an internship with Amazon in New York City. Adi Savant, who also just completed his first year in Duke's MBA program and is currently working at Dell in Austin on his internship. Welcome. Thanks so much, Thanks, John. So, yeah, so Jen, let's start with you. Uh, give me a little background on yourself and what actually led you to pursue an MBA and then why Duke? Sure, absolutely. So uh, just a bit about myself, originally from outside of Philadelphia, completed my undergrad at American University, which is in Washington, D.C. And after that, um, really just kind of fell into the hospitality and food service business where I spent 10 years uh, working everything from a server on the floor all the way up to marketing sales and then unit operations. My last position was as a general manager for the food service in the Frost Science Museum down in Miami, Florida. Um, oh, that had to be cool job. Yeah. It was, it was really cool and kept me like kind of very lighthearted. So sold a lot of French fries and chicken nuggets. <laughs> uh, um, despite the diet, you have incredible energy, great skin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what led me to uh, my MBA? So um, essentially what was happening is spending time as a general manager at the museum and saw a very slow trajectory for growth within the company that I was in. Um, very few kind of director positions for a lot of potential candidates. So I sat down and strategized basically like my 10 year plan. And I saw two options. One was either a career pivot and the second was change companies. Um, and then COVID hit and the answer was pretty much made for me. The hospitality industry kind of tanked a bit and started studying for my GMAT. Um, and then the last part of your question, John, was why Duke? And I was really looking for a program that focused on people, teams, and then also empathy, that EQ part. Um, and Fuqua really resonated the people that I spoke to in coffee chats on both of those topics. So that's why uh, I eventually led to Duke as my first option. And now you're a member of Team Fuqua. Yes, I am. I'm a very proud member. And for those of you who don't know, Team Fuqua, that is a, a phrase that is banding around a lot at the school uh, and realized by a lot of people in, in truth. And, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about what that actually means later on. Uh, Eddie, why don't you give us a little introduction uh, to yourself and answer the same questions? Yeah, thanks, John. So my name is Adi. Um, I'm originally from India, born and raised there. Um, did my undergrad in India as well. Um, I started working in consulting right after. Um, I was at ZS for about five years. Um, started off as an analyst in India, um, but then in a couple of years, I moved to London. Um, so I was focusing more on go-to-market strategies, um, helping pharma companies and biotech companies kind of launch new products in um, super diverse, like European markets. Um, I did that for about five years. Um, and that was kind of the point in time where I was, I was already a consultant um, and I was thinking about like, what's the next best, best path for me? Um, and there were two key drivers for me to, to think about MBA. One was that um, I had started working with people in tech um, and that kind of fascinated me. So I wanted to kind of try to pivot into that industry uh, and try to see how it is, which I'm doing now at Dell, which is awesome. Um, but secondly, I was also at that point in my career journey where I started managing bigger teams. So I had like teams of about 10 to 12 people. Um, and the next step would have been about 40, 50 people. Um, and I realized I had no formal business education. Um, so I thought maybe that was the perfect point in time to kind of take a break, um, learn from incredible people um, who come to like, business schools. Um, and then, then kind of take it from there. So that was, those were like my reasons for considering an MBA. Um, and the reason for Duke, I think Jen kind of hit the nail on the head. Um, the biggest thing is people. Um, I thrive in an environment where people collaborate a lot. Um, 
and there's like healthy competition, um, not pulling somebody else down to go up, right? So like I, I, I enjoy those environments um, and Team Fuqua essentially symbolizes that. Um, and also just like the, the variety of um, offerings that, that Duke has, both in terms of courses as well as leadership opportunities, um, those kind of resonated really well with me. So that made my decision easier. Um, I was thinking of between US schools and Europe schools because I was still living in London, but um, this was a clear winner for me. That's great. Adi, what was your undergraduate major? My university, sorry? Yes. Well, um, no, what was your undergraduate major? What did you specialize in? Oh, I, I did chemical engineering. Chemical engineering. And Jen, what was your undergraduate major? I did business undergrad. Okay, there we go. So uh, two, I mean, the, those are two chunks of people who you often find in every MBA program. A lot of people who've done business undergrad, a lot of people have done engineering degrees. Mm -hmm. um, I guess now doing the business undergrad makes you a kind of a cross between a poet and a quant. And Adi, you're definitely a quant. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure that there are non-traditional poets in your class as well that you collaborate with and have gotten to know. Um, what's, what was the biggest surprise you had? So you, you decide, yes, I'm going to Fuqua. You pack your bags and you ship off uh, to North Carolina and you step on campus. Does, what, is there anything that surprises you that, that maybe you weren't expecting and was a really positive surprise? Jen? Sure. I um, I think two things. The first thing was that I think previously I was a little bit naive in thinking that my circles were diverse. And when I came to Fuqua and started meeting all my classmates, I was really blown away by not only where everybody was from and and their background in that manner, but more so their career, the career diversity that I was exposed to. You know, you hit it a little bit there, John, when you said, you know, we have our poets, we have our quants, we have people who have, were in reporting or working in newspapers and actually like write things. There was, there's one of our classmates that ran an art gallery up here in New York. And then to, you know, the other end where I was in restaurants and Addie was an engineer. So that was, um, that was a realization on my part when I stepped in, into the halls at Fuqua. And then the second thing is how um, much of a learning curve it was getting back into the swing of things it's, of school. <laughs> oh, so wow, yeah. yeah, that was um, that was a surprise as well. Um, and at Fuqua, we do have a short summer term, which actually helped the ramp up process. So we take about four or three easy, easy ish courses just to get you into the swing of things with the case studies and the discussions and the manners in which, you know, the classes are going to be run by the professors. So um, that transition semester really helped out. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned just the diversity of people that you meet in a business school program. That's a really good program. Uh, I mean, when different people from different cultures collide, magic happens. And I think, you know, and this is particularly true from just simplifying it to poets and quants. You know, you build on each other's strengths, you minimize the weaknesses, and you learn from each other. And that really is the secret sauce of a great MBA program. Adi, for you, was there a big surprise of any kind? Yeah, um, I, I was going to say, I think diversity definitely is one of the biggest trends. Um, and like, we have a pretty inclusive community where like, you get to learn from pretty much everyone. Um, the, so one of the things at Fuqua is like you have your close-knit study group, um, we call it a C-lead. Um, and just like I was, I was, I was out, it was outstanding to see like just the different experiences people had, not just professional, but also the way they grew up and like mm. some of the personal values that they carry. Um, I think that was like a big learning for me. Um, again, I lived in India, I lived in the UK, so I felt like I had a diverse network. But then when I came here, uh, the being alongside 400 incredibly smart people from all over the world, it gets intimidating. But uh, you soon realize that everybody is kind of on the same boat trying to find their ground. Um, and that's kind of where that magic happens. Like you build like really strong relations. Um, you try to understand one another at a per on a personal level more than just like professional level. And that really adds a lot of value. That's great. Now, being uh, an engineer, you know, typically those are among the most rigorous, most demanding programs you can find. I wonder how your MBA experience so far compares with that. 
I imagine an MBA has got to be a layup for you, right? No, I mean, I think there's like, there's a, I, I, I think of both those things completely different. I guess um, in my chemical engineering, I did courses which were quite in depth into some of the topics of chemical engineering. Um, but for example, at FUCO, we have a term structure. So we don't have a semester structure like we ha I had in my undergrad in India. So courses run six weeks. So you've got two terms in fall, two in spring. Um, and the beauty of that is like, it, it's quick, of course. So you have to be on top of things, but you get to do so many different courses and so many different things within that span of time that you just like emerge as such a, uh, such a much more smarter human being at the end of it. For example, like before my internship, yeah, before my internship, I wanted to learn more about marketing strategy, um, a bit about like finance, accounting, all of those things. And uh, when I was considering these schools, I was, I was thinking, oh, these are a lot of courses. Um, how am I going to do this before internships or even before my interviews? But uh, because of the, the way the terms are structured, um, we got to learn a lot of what was required to, to kind of find the best job. Um, and that kind of set, up, set us up for like really good success. So um, I, I think of those two things completely in a, in a different sense. Both had like really good learnings and um, a big impact on me. Great. Now, I want to ask each of you to recreate two moments in your first year uh, at Duke. The first moment I want you to recreate from is a time when you looked at what you were doing. You looked at, you were inside the experience of it, and you said, my God, I'm so lucky I'm here. I made the right choice. And the second moment I want you to recreate for our audience is the moment you said, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? Jen, let's start with you. Give us your two <laughs> moments. <laughs> okay, I'll start with the second moment. My, oh my gosh, what have I done? <laughs> so um, I, so being in sales and hospitality, that's very like people facing role. So I'm, I'm oh. more of a poet in that way. Like I, as Addy, you know, feed off of people's energy. So maybe not so strong on the quant side, more specifically, perhaps on the finance side. So those classes were really a stretch for me um, and they challenged me a lot. So, you know, taking the quizzes, taking the finals, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, wow, you know, could I have studied harder maybe a little bit, but at the same time, you know, that's what, what, what it's about. And I'm like, wow, not only am I being pushed, but I'm constantly being pushed to feel uncomfortable, which is good in, in, in and of itself. And then- well, I can only imagine you, you must've been a basket case on the <laughs> night before your finance final exam, worrying, oh my goodness, can I pass this or not? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But what's really good is that, you know, at the start of that class, um, we work in, as Addie mentioned, working groups, and it's about knowing what I can bring to the table and then being honest and communicative with my team. So we had people that were really strong on the quant side, just sitting there and, and saying, okay, you know, this is my background. I've worked in finance before. And, I, and I'm saying, well, I can write up all of the documents and if you guys help me just learn. So so, um, so yeah, so uh, moving on to the second moment. So when perhaps I felt that I was so lucky to be there. And I think that that was really opening week. So opening week of orientation. And I'm sitting there with 400 of my classmates. We were all masked up, but we were all there. And we were all there in person. And feeling the energy of all of us kind of come together. We're all separated in sections. There's six sections. And we had to come up with a cheer. Um, and hearing all of our section cheers, just getting so excited for the year to come, I felt extremely lucky, um, at the opportunity to be able to sit in that chair. Okay. Jen, what was your section chair? What did you cheer? <laughs> um, uh, so I am section six and <laughs> oh they're going to be so proud of me. So mine was so, so, so six. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's fantastic. I love it. Okay, Adi, your two moments. <laughs> that, that was amazing. <laughs> they're, they're really going to love you, Jen, for this. <laughs> um, for me, yeah, I, I think um, I was also thinking about kind of the, the first week uh, of orientation, but um, Jen kind of covered that. So I'll, I'll share my, my kind of the second best moment. Um, it was kind of on the other end of the spectrum, right? So like when we finished the first year, um, I think we just like that moment felt like so blissful because 
MBA journey is it's pre, it's pretty um, hectic, right? So there's so many things that happen right from moving. Like for me, it was moving countries, um, settling into a new place, a new culture, meeting new people, disrupting your life from what it was before. Um, and then you start with courses, recruiting. It's a lot of things. Um, so I feel like one of the best moments was, and everyone keeps telling you that um, you're going to get through. It's like, you're all smart people. You'll get through. Um, but sometimes it's, it's hard to see that because until you yeah. get to the end of it, you can only appreciate it looking backwards. So I think for me, it was also a good moment when we finished our term, uh, finished all the courses. Um, our, our whole class did a trip. I mean, a, a big chunk of our class did a trip together. Um, that felt like really good. So coming through the bridge, like crossing it all, surviving and everyone did fantastically during the year. Um, so I think that felt really good. Um, on the on, on, your trip, start, on your trip. The trip? Oh, so there were like 80 of us who went to Brazil. Nice. So we attended the carnival in Rio, which has always been like a, a, a bucket list item for many of us. Fantastic. And then um, your second, yeah. Yeah, so my, um, oh, so the scary moment of what have I done moment was, again, I would say for me, it was, um, as you rightly said, like the quant courses didn't bother me that much because of my background. Uh, but again, like I did not have any formal um, education in marketing or um, even for that matter, accounting strategy. Um, I think those did take me by surprise. The, the amount of cases that you have, you have to read um, to be able to participate in classes. It definitely is super valuable, but um, I'm, I was not used to reading so much, um, especially when you've got like conflicting priorities going on. So I think that came off as a surprise. Um, I was, I, I'm not ashamed of saying that I was overwhelmed a couple of times uh, when, when there were like too many things going on. But um, again, there's this whole belief and like you've got your peer support and your CLE, the, the study group that I said, um, everyone believes in you. They always like push you to, to do your best. And that always kind of takes you through it. Yeah. And that emphasis on group work uh, helps you realize that, you know, your reliance on your team, on other people is crucial to your success. And that you can't go off and just be the solo individual uh, and really truly be successful in today's world. Now, Jen, uh, we mentioned the phrase early on, Team Fuqua. It's a central part of the culture of the MBA experience at Duke. What is Team Fuqua? Can you describe it for people who may not have any experience with it? Sure, and I think Addie alluded, and Addie, feel free to chime in on here too. So Addie alluded it to a little, a little bit earlier when he said that it's really about bringing ourselves up as a group. And it's about making, ensuring everyone's success, not just individually. And that can be challenging at times, you know? So especially when perhaps you have a paper and you're like, man, you know, I could have gotten this done so much faster if I was just doing it alone. Well, as you had mentioned, John, earlier, collaboration, especially with people of diverse, diverse backgrounds, result in, in, in a final product that in the end much ends up being much, much better than if you had done it alone. Um, and also pushes you to learn from other people. So yes, that is what my interpretation is of Team Fuqua, um, making sure that you are doing and you are doing and moving forward with success as a group rather than an individual. And I think the fundamental philosophy behind Team Fuqua is the belief informed by actual research uh, that groups of people can make better decisions collectively than an individual can. That the, the final result, as difficult as it often is to get to when you're dealing with more personalities from different perspectives, is going to be a better solution than one that's just jammed down by a single person. Uh, Adi, I wonder if, if you might reflect on Team Fuqua and what it's meant to you. Yeah, I think Jen hit it really well. Um, I think Team Fuqua for me is it's about so collaborative learning and consequential leadership. So we talk about these things quite a lot at Fuqua. Um, and Team Fuqua, I think it's it basically, it, it kind of is in between some of those things. Um, so learning from peers, I think is a big part of like any MBA program, but uh, we do pay a lot of emphasis on that. Um, just because of the diversity, like I said, diversity is power. Like you get to know so much. 
Um, and so Jen and I, when, when we also, so we ran um, for, for precedence and like uh, one of our, our key points there was we want people to be their authentic selves. You know, you don't, you shouldn't be, shouldn't feel stressed to not be yourself just because of the environment you're in, because then you're not going to share things that might help other people. And as you said, group decisions always are better because like you cover so many different perspectives, which is needed in, in this world today. So we want people to be their authentic selves when they, in any setting, even in social settings or even in classroom settings, so that everyone can share their learnings, their experiences, and each other, one, one other can learn from them and then kind of inch towards the common goal. Um, and of course, people have their personal goals also, but there's this collective um, collective diversity that comes together and it's just, the picture is always beautiful. So that's, that's Team Fuqua. That's great. Now, I always think there are two core elements to any great MBA program. One is, of course, intellectual development, which occurs through the academics. The other is professional development. And that's not to be underestimated because I think that unlike any other school, any other department in the university, the business school is the only one that truly develops the person as a professional. And I wonder, Jen, if you might talk about those two elements. So on the academic side, what was your favorite course so far and your favorite professor and why? And then secondly, what co-curricular activity did you get involved in to basically develop your professional side? Sure. So um, co-curricular activity to develop my professional side was definitely um, our consulting club. We have a few different segments of clubs at Fuqua. We have activity. We have, um, is what's the third one, Addy? Social. I don't think that's the correct word for it, but it's activity, social, and then professional. Mm -hmm. um, so the consulting club is a, an example of a professional club. And to get and ramp us first years up for our interviews and applications, they did a roadmap. And it was, I believe, six part roadmap where we attended on a Saturday, each Saturday for six weeks. And the second years, which was Fuqua was a, um, a student led school. So they really drove that training forward with us and not only kind of cased with us, worked on our communication and presentation skills, they, they really offered a lot of their time. And, you know, as a second year moving forward, I particularly want to make sure that I pay that forward. Um, so professional development side. I just want to add something here because this is kind of important for people who may not know. You know, the clubs, the professional clubs, particularly the consulting club, Mm -hmm. really helps prepare you for the grinding, uh, grueling uh, series of interviews with consulting firms that are very much case-based, where you're asked to analyze a given situation, and they're, they're trying to, to, to get a look at the framework that you're using and how you think. And those are not easy interviews to go through, and consulting clubs are ideal because people who've already been through a summer internship with the McKinsey at Bain, a BCG, Accenture, Deloitte, or what have you, can, can go back and tell everyone first year, this is what you can expect and this is how you prepare for it. It's really valuable and you're not going to get that anywhere else. And then Jen, yeah. sorry to interrupt. No, not, not at all. And then in addition to, you know, that prep, we also broke out into case families. So there was some more um, personalized one-on-one -on -one, um coaching, I suppose you can call it. And all of that is also in addition to, obviously we have the career management services um, as part of led by the administration. So um, there's really a two-pronged two -pronged approach to, to that recruitment side, um, particularly in consulting. And then John, could you just remind me of the first one? Was it a class that I really favorite, enjoyed on the academic class, side? Favorite class so far. Okay, so um, again, I uh, people might also chuckle at this one, but my favorite professor was actually John Heater, and he did our managerial accounting course. And the passion that he brought in class just really made a subject that you know, when you see it on your class schedule, it was part of the core that you might might not jazz you at first, but when you get in there, he really just took it from a perspective of okay, you might not you're not going to be an accountant, right? I'm never going to be an accountant. But how, as a manager moving forward in my profession, should I look at these different um, cash balances, you know, cash flows, the P&Ls, and how can I extract data and 
that I can use for for managerial decisions. So that would have been my favorite class. Um, well, you you got to love that anyway. because I would never have thought that an accounting class, <laughs> an accounting professor would be the best one you had in your first year, but it says so much about the quality of the faculty and their ability to ignite passion and interest in the students. Adi, how about for you? Yeah, um, and I was gonna say the same thing. I, I think our accounting professor was amazing. Um, I had a different one, but still making that topic fun is a big ask and I think everyone loved it. So, um, but um, I answer that question slightly differently. So um, I do have a lot of core classes, but um, I also happened to exempt a couple of courses because of which I could take electives a little sooner. Um, uh -huh. And it's, it's what I usually do is like, I always want to do one course, which is completely out of my comfort zone, just to learn something completely new. So in fall for me, that was, uh, some, that was about decision sciences. So I learned a bit about um, coding and how some of those things work. It was not actually a coding course, but learning how to work with people who, who code. Um, and there's also a course in spring I did, which was on crypto ventures. So uh -huh. it was, not exactly trading cryptocurrencies, of course, but it's more about what's the science that goes behind it. Um, and I think those that like, have enriched my life pretty, pretty significantly because I had no idea how those things work. Um, and now at least I can have a conversation with people about that. And that's, that's kind of touching on your point on, you know, it's not just academics that you do, it kind of builds your whole personality, right? So those courses I would say like stuck really close to me. Um, and on the, on the extracurricular front, um, Jen covered the, the professional clubs. So um, I'll talk about the other ones. I think social clubs and um, the activity clubs, all of them also play a huge role. Um, and the good thing is like everyone gets invited to everything, right? So um, there's, we have a, a very active Blimbao club, which is the Black and Latinx students. Um, and there's an Indus club for India and like there's, there's uh, Asian business club and all of them have their um, own seminars or they also have their own activities and festivals. Um, and I think that's a really good place to learn, especially for people who may not have any experience with those things. Mm -hmm. So I always make it a point to go to different kinds of activities um, just to like see how they celebrate it or just to learn more from them. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's like the, that's the personal learning that I also feel like it's, it's equally important. Yeah, that's great. Adi, you're at Dell. Jen, you're at uh, Amazon. Tell me how helpful the school was in aiding uh, your pursuit of an internship that you really wanted. Jen? Sure. So um, my journey to into recruitment actually started a little bit early. I got the opportunity through Forte to attend the conference um, over the summer, which I believe just happened last week or is happening pretty soon. And the our career management services center, which is called the CMC, um, also allocates a second year advisor. So a buddy, if you will, that is paired with every first year coming into school to be able to talk all things um, recruitment. Any questions that you have, if you want them to take a look over your resume, um, really just to kind of get you onboarded into the process. And my, my CMC buddy was amazing. She really connected me um, to a lot of second years who were currently interning that particular summer at Amazon in the program that I was looking to apply to, which is the Financial Leadership Development Program, to set up some coffee chats, learn about their process, and really just get myself started to be able to apply early. So that was the support that I had in terms of um, early recruitment, which I was successful in, which was amazing. Um, a really other big component to, to my success in getting that was also, as Addie mentioned, our Sealy group, which was my peers. And mm. as I had mentioned before, um, with, my, with my finance class, I was, because the Amazon interview required a lot of preparation, a lot of time, um, I sat with my C lead and I told them what was going on and they were so supportive. They were like, okay, Jen, well, we're going to support you on this. If you have to bow out of maybe like taking a lighter load in some of the projects and um, later on down the road, when we're recruiting, then you can, you can make it up to us. And I think that, you know, again, that's another example of team Fuqua and honest communications, how we can all lift each other up together. So yes, that was my, that was my journey to getting here. Great. Adi? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I can, I can share a couple of things, I guess. So both of us, interestingly, we're also industry switchers. So like that, of course, like takes a bit more of heavy lifting. 
Um, and so I think, yeah, um, th that's a really good question. So I think for us, for, for me at least, um, I think the CMC played quite a big role. Um, so there, are, I would say like two different things um, that I think kind of set me up well. One is that um, very early on in, in when I was joining, um, the, we were connecting with the, the, the tech lead um, at, at Pukwa. And um, because like I, I don't, didn't have any idea about what are the different roles people take or what are the different, um, yeah, like designations that people have. So it was like mm -hmm. starting from, from scratch. So he provided a lot of information um, on kind of trying to marry your skills from before into what that means in tech. And that was super helpful because then it just like helped me understand that product strategy was a better fit for me. And then I could like at least streamline my effort there. Otherwise I would have been all over the place. Um, second thing is that they, the school also kind of puts you in touch with um, a mentor who is already in the industry. Um, so an ex few course, I was, I was working with uh, somebody who was in my shoes three years ago, um, career switcher, and then when I think he's working at Google now. So just like getting that first-hand experience really helped. Uh, and that person also helped me prep with interviews and all of those things. Um, and third, I think, which is like um, not directly CMC, but uh, it's, it's a part of Fuqua's program. Um, we have something called as mentored study, which you can, which is a part of the experiential learning at Fuqua, which is also a, a big part of our, our curriculum. So you can actually work for a whole semester with an organization um, mm -hmm. and just for credits. So, and you can, you, you get like a super senior mentor. Um, and yeah, basically it's like, just like you dive deep and get, get your hands dirty because that's usually the best thing, best way to learn. And um, I was working with an AI startup in California, never worked in AI before, never worked in tech before, uh, but my mentor had like 30 years of experience. And I think through, through it, like I learned so much that um, I felt way more prepared for my internship and also eventually for my job. So I think those three were like really played a big that, role in what got me there. Yeah. That's really good insight into all the work that's done to help make people get on track and, and achieve their dreams. So one last question, 18 months, to two years ago, you were in sort of the shoes of many of our uh, people in the attendance here uh, in our audience. Uh, you were looking at your options, deciding to take this journey Looking back, what advice do you have for people today? Jen? I'd say take the time to really understand the program and understand what you're looking to get out of it. Um, I think that if I could give that advice to myself 18 months ago, I would have taken it a bit more seriously. Not that I I'm not happy with my choice, but I think that um, just knowing the variety of options that are out there for MBA programs, just make sure that you pick the one that is the right fit for you. Yep. Uh, good advice. Get started early, be thoughtful about it, do your research. Adi? Yeah, um, I think that's a, that's a really good one. I think for me also, it's about being deliberate about what you're trying to do uh, mm -hmm. during applications and also after when, once you come to the program. Um, I think um, a lot of people, when they choose their undergrad majors, people are pretty young. So like you may or may not know how things work. But um, a business school degree is not something you do just for the sake of it. Like have really good points, which will also help you in applications because you need to have a coherent story. But I knew, I, I, I can say this also, I was trying, I was considering applying a couple of years before I did. But when I started to think about it, I did not have tangible points. So I took a break. I decided that I'm going to think more about it. And then when I knew what I wanted out of the program, that's exactly when I applied. And I think that makes a huge difference because it's a two-year program. Things move pretty fast. You need to know what you want to get out of it to be able to maximize your, your returns. Um, so I think, yeah, just like being deliberate about it, do your research, start early. Um, at times, if you feel like you're not ready, it's fine. Like you can wait for another year. It's never too late. But just like be completely cognizant of what you're getting into and what you want out of it. And that's, that's going to be the best result. That's great advice. Now, Adi, were you in the same section as Jen? I was not. I was in section one. We're not. Okay. Well, Jen did her section cheer oh. for us. I'm not going to let you off the hook. You've got to do your section cheer before <laughs> we, we sign off here. Come on. Well, yeah, ours was, ours was like a little simpler. Ours was just it's like, so section one is called Uno. They, they're called Unos. 
is just like you know who know so one guy shouts you know and 100 people shout who know so it's like it's better with a group not just by myself oh i know you better with a, a team with come on yeah. you did a good job with that all right <laughs> hey ani and jen what a pleasure it's been to meet you and spend some time with you i wish we could have a whole afternoon frankly because we could talk about so many different things um uh, but really it's been a true pleasure for me Good luck to both of you in your second year, as well as finishing off your internships and landing a great job offer, uh, and for your future career. Uh, clearly, both of you are on your way, and uh, it looks like you're both enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you very All much, right. Jen.